Welcome back everybody to Super Mega Baseball 3, continuing the second year of the franchise. We're coming off one of our most fun games of the series, winning 11-9 over the defending champion Chompers. That sure felt good. I want to get into this game against the Phantoms today with Dino Madrano. So we'll open with a quick sim as we continue this two-game set against the Chompers. And... Chompers pull away late and hang on for a 6-2 victory. So we split that little series. We're going to take on the Phantoms today. A team that is off to a tremendous start 5-2 and, and we'll face Patrick Armstrong as we'll play with Dino Madrano today. I played with him quite a bit last season. I'll try to get a few more starts with Sheffield in for Season 2. But we'll just have to see how everything goes. We have a different lineup today. You'll notice Ty Gonzalez is batting ninth. He is in a slump right now. I'm just trying to mix up the order a bit. I wanted to move Daniels up. I wanted to bat Lumen not at ninth or eighth. So somebody has to bat ninth. We'll put Ty down there while he works back from the early season struggles. But we open here against Armstrong, wasting no time. Boof Cobb on the mound here. A quick two and two count. And chasing outside a quick strikeout. Here's Demario Waddle, who might be our MVP so far this year. 355 average, a couple home runs, and four RBIs. Two and one. In there for a strike at the knees. And a soft line drive into center field. Base hit for Waddle. Now, I saw Armstrong's numbers before we started this game. I thought this would be his first start. It's not. He just allowed no runs in his debut and uh, already had five or uh, four strikeouts in his first appearance. So here is Sonny Cooker. Let's put up the first runs against Armstrong this year. Two and one. At the knees again, two and two. And a line drive, get back to first base. Glad I caught that one quickly. The, the CPU, like the automatic base running, is not going to save you from those line drives. You've got to be on top of things knowing if a line drive is hit, what you got to do to get that base runner back. Although I guess you can just hold the, the go back trigger. I guess that would be R1. Like... Baseball base running controls have been pretty much the same for a long time, but for whatever reason, I always like individually pick out my base runners and never use the advance all and return all feature. And I think I've seen so many instances over the years of where I uh, should use that basic control. It shouldn't be that difficult. Full count. Runner goes. Called off a good pitch. Ah, oh, man. It, it's weird because... I have to choose when I'm going to scramble, or er, scramble. I have to manually press steal when I want the base runner to go. And that requires me to use my left thumb, which I use to control the reticle. So it throws off all my timing there because I have to be ready to, you know, does that make sense? I don't know. Missed a pitch there, Madrano on the mound, and that is Seymour recording the second out rather quickly here. We're working at a ridiculously fast pace, it feels, so far in the first inning. Big swing and miss here for Aria Porpetta, the three-hitting catcher. Two quick strikes here, Madrano. How about a strikeout and a quick 1-2-3 inning? That was perfect. All right, Neil Hope leads off the second here for the Sharks. Pretty good pitch there, left up by Armstrong. I'm missing a few of these early on here. Whoa, three strikeouts already for Patrick. All right, I got to stop chasing upstairs here. It's Casey Daniels now. We'll lay off the low one. On the ground now to short, and Gold makes the play. Hudson Lumen's only hitting 143 so far. Had no idea he was slumping. That's it pretty well, though. 
but it's a lazy fly ball for Kanoa who puts that away. Here is Kaloa Kanoa, one of the best hitters from the Super Mega Baseball 2 series. Off to a good start this year. Let's see if Madrano can put together as good of a, a second inning as that is out of reach. Wow, going up for it. Strike three, swinging. You know, I've been watching so much baseball for the last month. Every night I have it on. Usually uh, at least one game a night, but I pretty much always have the late West Coast stuff on regardless. And then the Twins games too. That's drilled the center. Every time I record this, though, it just feels weird seeing fans at the stadium. Because uh, now I've watched, you know, a couple hundred games probably already with no fans. It's so uh, weird for me for some reason here playing with fans on this game. Hit that pretty well right at Kanoa for the first out here in the third. And now Ty Gonzalez. I hope this nine hitting situation is very temporary, but we'll have to see. Armstrong is having an outstanding first trip through this order. Man, I just... Swinging and missing at everything now. I think last episode, what I have, like one strikeout? Oh, that might work out for us. Cobb is going to reach on the error at first. That was an error, right? Yep. It's Mario Waddle now gets a chance. Oh, boy. That might even fall in, though. Nope. All right. Let's work on the discipline a little bit going forward. Three great innings for Patrick Armstrong. That's popped. Sparks into the outfield. He wants to make the play here. Dual threat running back right there. Infield, outfield, doesn't matter. Barry Inseki, I forgot he was on this team. I miss Barry Inseki. Those Chargers seasons were really fun. Partially because of our running back situation. And he almost reached on the dribbler. Here's Dion Gold, the shortstop. Gonna miss inside here. That's driven a long way into center field. Waddle way back. And not enough room for this one. It's gone. Dion Gold to dead center field. And that's a 414-foot homer. The offenses weren't doing too much. There is the uh, best swing by far of the day. Glenn Hayes up now. And he looks at strike three. There's another one for Medrano. But really good starts here for both of these pitchers. We got to start getting something, though, against Armstrong. That whip is at .68 now. Oh, I didn't have to move the radical down. Just underneath it. One away. Sylvester Seymour now. He's done a pretty good job. Throwing strikes low and then getting me to chase high. Two and one. I chase that one. Hopkins makes the stop and Armstrong covers. Here is Neil Hope. Right back up the middle. Almost caught by Armstrong. There is, I think, our second hit today. Both singles. Casey Daniels hitting 500 still. Behind that one, quickly two strikes on Casey. And right at Hayes at short, or second base. On to the fourth we go, moving quick. Jackson Taylor hit to the left side. Diving stop by Seymour, and the throw in time. For these offenses, it just must feel like there are 13 players in the field. Just no one's finding open space. Oof Cobb makes the catch. And back to Kaloa Kanoa. That's driven hard to center field. Waddle back again. It's gone. 
Two solo shots here for the Phantoms, and they're up two to nothing. First homer on the season for Kanoa. That's driven right at Casey. I didn't need the jump for it, actually, and that'll cost us. Hard to judge sometimes if you have to go up for it or not. But suddenly, the offense doing pretty well here for the Phantoms. They'll get first and third here with two away. We need to get this out. There we go. Good strike, Madrano. Got a couple to work with now. Softly to Cooker. Inning over. Let's get some offense going now. Madrano's outing hasn't been bad. Hudson Lumen. Tense now. And lines out to Dion Gold. Ollie Sparks up to 22 average. We'll chase that one. All right, we take a couple to start. Three, you know? Nope, that's a strike. Good count now. Stop by Hayes, diving, and Sparks is retired. Just cannot get anything going. Ty Gonzalez here. That was a good breaking ball to hit. Ooh, better placement on that one. Drifting inside, count runs even. Jammed a bit, hit pretty well out to right field, but not well enough. Jackson Taylor makes the catch. Got to limit that uh, home run ball now for Madrano. I still want to get through at least five innings. The bullpen today, if we take a look here, McNeil not going to pitch today unless it's really bad. Velez, Parker, Valdez, good stamina. So if he could only go five, that's not a big deal. Just want to keep track in case the bullpen's really tired. Two strikes quickly here on Dion Gold. Wow, another one driven to center and Gold from the nine spot has two homers on the day. Three solo shots off Dino Madrano. It's 3 nothing Phantoms. With Patrick Armstrong having a fantastic outing, I know he's locked in now. Not taking Madrano out yet. Ooh, almost went around on that one. Can we strike out Hayes? Oh, yes! Got the outside corner. Nice job. A few strikeouts today for Dino Madrano. Still at just 43 pitches. The stamina is not a problem. The home runs are... That's hit pretty hard. Taylor with a base hit. Don't pitch inside here. Got it. Strike one here to Porpetta. Up the middle. Daniels out at second. So a 3-0 lead here for the Phantoms. Three straight innings where they hit a solo shot. Can we get anything going against a locked-in Patrick Armstrong? Cobb turns on the first pitch and will ground out softly. Down the line, well foul, and it will be out of reach. Wow, I just can't see the ball right now. That's a lot of strikeouts for one game. Cooker right at gold and will take an error. Thank you. I wouldn't have even been that mad if he caught it. It was at least a decent swing. We could use a couple more of those. Here's Seymour. Just realized Armstrong's now on fire. Still yet to allow a run this season. Seymour softly lines out to Dion Gold. A lot of soft line drives today. 
We're going to keep Medrano out there. The offense ain't doing much right now. I want to see if Medrano can keep this going. If not, I mean the offense ain't doing a whole lot anyway. So let's just save the bullpen. Plus, they've only had successfully with the home runs. So if we can just limit those. Like, we can't allow Tyrone Brightful to go yard. He's hitting 200. Two quick strikes here. Feeling pretty good. Ooh, just off the corner. Not a bad outing here for Dino Madrano. That's a quality start. But no quality hitting to back it up. Here is Neil Hope. Way inside. Still a strike. That one is actually way inside. Wow. Hit that one pretty hard, but it's right at Hayes. Armstrong will exit after that. Another great outing, and now we'll face Julio Mariano. Great junk, great accuracy. Similar velocity to what we've been seeing today. He throws a cutter, slider, curveball. And that is pulled into left field. Daniels in with a base hit. Let's see if we can start to get things going now. We're facing a different style pitcher. A lefty focusing on movement. That is right down the middle. Two quick strikes now on Hudson Lumen. Just a piece of that one. Runner goes. Lined right at Hayes. What are the chances? Can we get away from these middle infielders? Please. Might as well keep Madrano out there. I guess I just want to go deep into the game with him today. Hit over to Hope. Nice play. Another out. I've had some tough outings with Madrano. This is certainly one of the better ones. The pitch count has just been so good all day. 3-1, and one, though, here to Barry and Secchi. And he drills that one into the left center gap, and the Phantoms will have a runner in scoring position. I don't mind going to the bullpen now. Dion Gold already took him yard twice, so we are going to Velez. Parker is rattled right now, so he's not going to pitch unless we really need him later on. But here's Dion Gold. Got to avoid the home run ball. And that is up the middle. Advancing the runner. But a second out. And that brings up Glenn Hayes. Velez has excellent numbers on the season. And that is up the middle for Casey Daniels. Not the best throw, but it's right there. All right, it is the eighth inning. Can we finally get something established? We'll take that one high. Drilled right to Hayes. The ball is just going to the same two players. Ty Gonzalez. There we go. Away from the infielders. And Gonzalez in the nine spot. We'll be in with a double. I do think we should pinch run for him here. It's hard to get those doubles with him at times. Like, I've been thrown out with him many times because his speed is so low. We will have Enter Text out there. And here's Boof Cobb now. Five RBIs on the season. He does have a home run. Cobb, right up the middle. Base hit. Taylor rounds third. Here's Brightful's throw at the play. No, oh, it's not even close. He's way out. I have a hard time judging if an outfielder can make throws in this game because most of the time they can't. Tyrone Brightful makes the play. Here is Demario Waddle. 
Could have been first and third one away. And a line out to Hayes. I know I'm reaching at some of these, but can they just go to somebody else every now and then? It's the same outcome every time. Oh my! Velez gets drilled. Lumen covering almost makes the play. And Velez has extreme pain. That will be it for his day. Let's go to Parker here. We're playing horrible. So why don't we just try to fix Mojo? I don't think that's going to do it. Kanoa lines out at Seymour and he makes the double play. Wow. Jammed him and Hope makes the catch. Good job getting out of that jam. But now it's the ninth inning. Three nothing, but it feels like ten nothing. Oh my! Way too early. Well, it won't be caught by an infielder. And it will fall in right center. Cooker reaches. All right. That's good. Now here is the struggling Sylvester Seymour at 192 average. Trying to square up something here. Ooh, foul. Seymour right up the middle at Dion Gold. And that is a double play. As routine as it gets. Neil Hope now. Our last chance. Mariano looking for the save. Wow. Another good one. I'm way early on. Two strikes. Oh my. A dribbler. And Hopkins makes the play to Mariano. Just a bad hitting episode for me there all around. 3-0. I struck out five times. It felt like it was a lot more. They actually struck out more than we did. Okay, that one just, that didn't feel good enough for an episode. We're going to sim our next two games and I'm going to play with Rhett Sheffield now. So the Sharks are able to get a nice little 3-2 victory here. That was a Tyrus Spark start, very low scoring game. Chompers and Warhawks, and a really big start for the Warhawks. They score a 10-0 victory. And they were not very good a year ago. They're at least 5-5 five five to start this season. Now we're going to sim the first start for Zane Rose. I've played with him a couple times this year. And the Narwhals put up some huge numbers. And they just put up 20 runs! That's going to put our entire pitching staff on negative mojo. 20 runs! Checking out our pitchers, it's not as bad as I thought, but obviously Velez will need some time now to recover, so he won't be an option for us in our next game. We really need someone to step up here at pitcher. And I have to actually score a run at least. At least one. Getting into game two of the episode here. We're taking on the Narwhals today. Their top four hitters are all in good form right now. Positive mojo. And we start here. Ben Lobster Jr. with a 450 average and four home runs already. So, don't want to give him anything too good to work with here. That's a good slider. Softly hit to Seymour. One away. Here is BB Lumber. Six homers on the year. Okay, this team is putting up some runs. Like, our home run production last year was solid, but we have so much less to begin the season. Seymour is still looking for number one. I'm not even sure who leads the team right now. I know Waddle has two. We're missing the long ball, though. Here's Connor Cates, who has two homers and a 324 average. Maybe pitching these uh, two over the plate. Let's fix that. Get a new bat. There we go! Strike three! But we gotta get some runs in this game. We're facing Stephen Marshall. 
who has decent velo, decent junk, but very low accuracy. And that is the kind of swing that got us into trouble in the previous game, but somehow over a leaping Lobster Jr. Boof Cobb is aboard, and here's Demario Waddle. We got a drive some today. Waddle has three home runs, actually, not two. I know I simmed some games, so maybe we have a few more home runs. Ooh, a little late on that one. Two and two here from Marshall. Ooh, oh, I forgot it was two strikes. Can't look at that pitch. Behind that one. Wow, going upstairs now. I'm just not hitting well today at all. Sylvester Seymour's turn with two down. Jammed. Blew the fastball by him. And that should reach the seats, hopefully. Didn't have to chase that one. The ball just seems so fast right now. I'm not seeing it well. Let's go to the second inning now. Isaac Romano leads off. He's hitting 375 with a few home runs. This whole offense seems to be off to a great start. Alexandra Gold over 300. A couple long balls. Almost had one there. It was a bad pitch. That is a fair ball for Seymour. Good throw. And Milk Gale. Four RBIs, no home runs for him yet. Two quick strikes here on Gale. Ooh, got on the chase inside, got a piece. And now driven to left, Cooker back to make the catch. Two good innings here for Rhett Sheffield, but how about the hitting? Where are the hits? Where are the runs? Neil Hope. That is foul. Pretty good pitch. Not that one. Why did I swing at that pitch? Casey Daniels has the average down to 455. All right, we take the first two. That's driven pretty well to right center field, and Daniel should have extra bases. Good contact swing there. Maybe I have to go with some more contact swings in the meantime. It's probably a good idea. I think if your swing is off and you're trying to get recalibrated, I wouldn't even really try to do too many power swings. You're just not going to get great outcomes. Contact swings are just easier. One and two to Lumen. Into center. Pretty easy play. Ollie Sparks. I will go contact swing here. Just trying to get a run scoring single. And that will land softly. Romano hits the cutoff and we're up 1-0. There's a lot more forgiveness on these swings when you're not perfect, but it's a contact swing. If you go power and you don't barrel up good, I mean, good luck. one nothing. Behind that one here. Two strikes now on Ty Gonzalez. Ah, chased it low. Alright, we got a run though. That's better. To start the third inning, a ground ball hit right at Casey Daniels for a quick out. Sheffield has thrown 21 pitches so far. Excellent start. Now facing the shortstop, Duke Wilson. The ERA for Sheffield back into the threes. And that is weekly hit. That's a swing that I've been making today. Anaya Sanders now. 
No power, but some contact and speed. And that's lifted for Cooker. Not the best contact here for the Narwhals. It's still 1-0. Boof Cobb leads off the Sharks half of the third. And drills a single into center. Demario Waddle. Let's do better this time. Way low. Take off for second base. And in safely. Already in scoring position. Up the middle, hit really sharp. Lobster may have been able to go to third, but he gets the safe out with Waddle. And now Cooker, we want to fly ball. So do I go with power swing here? I don't know, honestly. 84 miles per hour. I'm just way early, even on a contact swing down the middle. Foul, or uh, foul, line drive. Luckily, I read that quick. Two down for Seymour. Not the best contact hitter. Two and two to Seymour. Wow! That's gone. A contact swing the other way, and this was a no-doubter from Sylvester Seymour. Maybe the contact swings are better than I thought. That jumped off the bat like it was a power swing. 3-0 Sharks. Neil Hope with the power swing. A base hit. Casey Daniels kind of got the offense going with that double earlier. What does he have in store this time? No, don't swing at that. Daniels up the middle, another hit. He keeps reaching. He won't be leaving anytime soon. Here's Hudson Lumen, who's locked in. Almost swung at that one. 2-0 from Stephen Marshall. Oh, I was even sitting on that fastball, too. Up the middle, Lumen singles. We'll send the runner home, and that'll make it 4 nothing Sharks. I'm not even playing average right now. We're up 4 nothing. This is better. Oh, my. 97 power. It's basically a pop-up. And it's caught on the track by Romano. I will take this though. Eight hits, four runs. Contact swings are really saving me here in this game. Lobster Jr. pops up. A long run for Seymour. And he's going to lay out and make the catch. Now the first baseman, number 11. That's what it's all about. Drilled the waddle. Almost overran it. I like quick innings here. Why waste time? Right at Waddle again. Time to hit. That was like the fastest inning I've had in this game. Bottom four. Ty Gonzalez, a base hit to center. We have nine hits on the day. Boof Cobb, power swing. Who's feeling a power swing with Boof Cobb right now? On the ground, and Lumber should have a quick double play, or not. Cobb reaches. Here's Demario Waddle. Didn't hit that one how I wanted to. Two outs. Here is Sonny Cooker. Again, going upstairs for it. I've liked the high pitch all day, and Cooker almost sends it out. Let's go top five. Rhett Sheffield. Really good outing so far. He's locked in too. The mojo is spectacular. But the Narwhals look to have broken up the no-hitter. It took him a while though. Oh, that's a line out. Kind of wish it was dropped. We can always double up Milk Gale potentially. Eh, he's pretty fast. It would take something sharp. Well, oh, that could have been it. He's going to reach. Two on. 
Jar Pacheco. I think he was signed in the offseason, and he hits the routine play to Sparks. 4 6 3, and we're out. Sylvester Seymour gave us a nice home run. And he's going to look to go back to back. Let's go. Two home runs for Sylvester Seymour. That was a power swing. I think the contact swing home run was actually hit a little bit better. So Stephen Marshall not having a great day helping us get back on track. We'll lay off that one. And off the glove and into center field. Hope reaches. Casey Daniels. The average remains high. Ooh, I wasted that pitch. Wow. Went all the way down for it. Engulfed it into center field. Now I want to go back to play some more PGA 2K21. Two on, nobody down for Hudson Lumen, who is now locked in. Watch out when he gets going. He's a fantastic hitter. Seven RBIs on the season, looking for more. And that's a line out, gotta get back. I'm surprised Marshall is still in the game. Turned on it, off the glove, and nope, not going to go home. Base is loaded now for Ty Gonzalez. Tense mojo could go away with one swing right here. Raiden Myers enters out of the bullpen. And welcome to the game. That is going to bring home at least two, maybe three. Gale throws it in. Runner holds at third. Gonzalez with the RBI double, and the mojo goes up. Much better game. Here's Boof Cobb. I don't think we're done. Cobb into left center field. This should be at least a sacrifice. And the Sharks will make this 8-0. Full count to Demario Waddle. And he gets jammed. And Lobster leaps to make the catch. Continuing with Rhett Sheffield. This will probably be one of those games where I'm just going to pitch him until he can't go anymore. I mean, the bullpen could use some rest. And we're up by eight. So if he gives up a couple home runs or something, I'm not too worried about it. But the way he's pitched... No reason to even think about taking him out of this ball game. Hit the other way. Foul. Not too many strikeouts today. Couldn't get one there. Hit to Daniels. We make the catch. Here is Ben Lobster Jr. Who has not made good contact today at all. Two strikes. He's got to chase one of these. Wow, hit that pretty well. That was a 99 slider in inside. How does he hit it there? Popped up. Another good inning here for at Sheffield. Put another zero on the board. New pitcher enters. Otto Hill will face Sylvester Seymour, who has back-to-back -back homers and is now locked in. Seymour to right center! Three home runs! Almost got ahead of myself there. It was in the first row. That's three! Well, I'd say things are back on track. 9 nothing Sharks. I'm pretty sure Seymour has homered off three different pitchers today. Well, that's gone. Neil Hope to center. That ball is way, way out of here. And it's 10 nothing Sharks.
Casey Daniels, oh, that's actually stopped, and over the head, Daniels will go to second base. Narwhals, thank you for this game. I needed that after the first game of the episode. Okay, that was bad. I didn't move the reticle at all. And Ollie Sparks will have an RBI double. 11 to nothing. Ty Gonzalez to right center field. The home run derby continues. What is this game suddenly? It is 13 nothing. Here comes another pitcher, Quinton Little. It's only the sixth inning. Okay, that's broken. And Cobb pops out. The Narwhals just can't get anything going against Rhett Sheffield today. He's allowed two hits. That's hit pretty well, but right at Daniels. Another easy inning for Rhett Sheffield. Here is Sylvester Seymour once again. There's no way he hits four home runs today off four pitchers, right? Deep right field, hit well! Seymour's done it! What a game! This is one of the best hitting performances ever on the channel. And I'm pretty sure they're all opposite field. I forget if one was pulled. That's four homers for Sylvester Seymour. Are you kidding me? After a slow start, nobody will remember it. Base hit, Neil Hope. That's a base hit, hit sharply, and the bases are now loaded. In our previous game, we gave up 20 runs. We're on the verge of scoring 20 runs. Holly Sparks has popped up. Can't even tag on that one. Alright, Ty Gonzalez will get the chance now with the bases loaded. He already has a homer, a double, and a single. Wow, off the glove. That's tough. Wilson will make the throw home and will keep the bases loaded for Boof Cobb. We gotta go power swing here with Boof Cobb. One and one actually laid off a strike. Not that one. And Cobb drives it. Right center. Back it goes. And that ball is out of here! It's a grand slam for Booth Cobb! And it's 20 to nothing! Are you kidding me with this game? This is the most runs I'll probably ever score in this game. Waddle right center. I'm not editing the end so I can show you going back to main menu. The ego settings are the same. I just got shut out, and now I've put up 20 runs. That's drilled the left. The inning is finally over. There should be a mercy rule. It's 20 to nothing. Ah, I almost had it. We can afford a few mistakes here. I guess we're still playing for a complete game shutout. And that definitely hurts our chances right there. Let's see if Sheffield can figure this out. Nope. We're not even going to throw home. It's a run. They're still down 19. I'm still trying for the complete game though with Sheffield. We'll see if it starts getting more out of hand. Broken bat. Hudson Lumen underneath it. Bottom eight. Our last inning of hitting. Four straight home runs for Sylvester Seymour. There's absolutely no way he hits five. Well 
Quentin Little still on the mound. Inside. Two and one. Oh, that's a strike. Two and two. Not a home run. What a game, though, for Sylvester Seymour to hit four homers in a row. The Narwhals have two aboard here in the ninth inning. Still nobody out, and perhaps it's time for Sheffield to exit. I wanted to see a complete game, but eight innings is still solid. But now the bases are loaded. Let's get Parker out there and try to end this. Could really use a triple play. Can't find the zone here, sadly. Two strikes from Parker. And a hard hit line drive. A run will score. And the bases will stay loaded. Up the middle. Waddle has no play. And that will bring home two more runs for the Narwhals. Alright, we'll go to our bullpen again. Our bullpen just needs some time to rest up. So I'm just going to keep Parker out there, actually. They're bound to hit an out eventually, right? There we go. 20 to 4. Sharks win. Biggest offensive day of the series. And so many home runs. We hit... How many? Seven homers in this game. Four of them for Sylvester Seymour. What a day. Sheffield wins eight innings, only had one strikeout, but a great outing for him. We haven't had too many games like that. Wow. But yeah, sometimes, you know, you have a terrible game, and sometimes you have an impeccable game, and you just never know what's going to happen. I wanted to play one more game to get on track. You know, I was happy putting up like five runs early, but we put up 20. So that is the game and the episode, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. You got to see kind of our highs and lows this episode. So I hope you had fun with the second game at least. We'll continue next time with the Sharks and see if we can start to build a good record here north of 500. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like on the episode. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you with more Super Mega Baseball 3 soon. Have a great day.